Wait, there's a basement in this place too? That's a good refrigerator. And they got all their feed bins in here. This is the old mill in town, what's left of it. We're gonna do the best we can to show you here. Cause the power's cut off and obviously we can't turn the lights on, but we do have permission to be in here. We uh, made sure to do it right. That's a blender. Back here should be the pit. Hopefully I don't fall through this deck. That's sketchy, it's moving. That's the pit. I actually dumped corn in here one time. And they used to t t bring corn in here for people and they grind feed for people. And I actually dumped a load of corn in here one time with a barge wagon behind the 1955. for the control for the diverters up top of the tower. It's a shame they let this place get this bad. But it's, it went into foreclosure. That is a Judging by the fact that there's a screen in there, that is a hammer mill. I ain't going down there because this place is standing full of water, but wheelbarrow, it ain't got that much water, but I still ain't going down there. Uh, Pratter. Chicago, Illinois. That's the blower for it. Bottom of the legs, big ass motor. Something else over there. Possibly another different form of a hammer mill. I doubt it's a sheller. Should have brought my waders and I'd have went down in there, but I ain't going down in there and risk my regular boots. All customers must have copy of any medications used in mixes. What? You should see the motor downstairs on the hammer mill. I like those lights. Those things would be cool to put in a barn. Those are your sackers. <laughs> what? Water. Yeah, I went down there. It's not. If I had waiter or if I had my muck boots, I'd have went down in there. It's only like two inches deep, but I didn't want to find out there's some sort of. That's cool old scale. I'm assuming that used to be an outer wall. I 
know, another mixer. All the overhead bins. Hey, speaking of muck boots. <laughs> I don't know if I'm, yeah, I'm good. Bird seed bags, those aren't nothing special. Huh, that's fitting. Merry Christmas. But I think I started to say the this place went into foreclosure and the city took it and it's kind of on the slate to kind of be demolished. But uh, it hasn't made it that far yet. So I've been trying to get in here to get video of this before they demolish it. Just to kind of have a remembrance of it. And when they, when they lost it, they kind of just turned the key and walked away, hence all the feed and stuff that's still in here. That's probably worth something to somebody. That's a chicken cage. That's actually a really nice one, older one, probably from the 50s or 60s. Because they went this, this quit being the... Well, it was always a feed mill up until a few years ago, but it became part of co-op. And then co-op moved outside of town to where it is now in the 70s. And this was the office, obviously. Wow, they really just walked away. All the stuff from the fair and the signs and everything are still up. Sucks it's been here so long you take some of this horse stuff home to Kimmy. Now I'd probably just kill the horse. But uh, anyhow, they ran feed through here. They ran, this was the actual where everybody hauled their stuff up till the late 60s. And then in the 70s, they moved outside of town to where they are now. And this just became the feed mill. A set of screens for that hammer mill. But the uh, actual elevator is over on the other side of the street. We're going to go through there here in a minute. But we started over here in the mill. That's a neat old desk, too. Steel Age. Corey Jameson Manufacturing, Corey, Pennsylvania. That's probably late 50s, early, probably 60s, judging by the color. Be cool to find some old receipts or something in here and nab a couple just to have. Yeah, that's nothing cool in there. Well, there are some old receipts 94, 94, 06. I'm slowest I'm seeing 98. Oldest I'm seeing is the 90s, but. Mixmaster beef manual. There's a dairy manual, hog manual. I'm assuming it's. Damn it. Uh, it's all like feed information and stuff. I 
And there's one more basement over here we can go into. Sorry, it's kind of dark. I'm doing the best I can here. Huh. This one's not full of water. What? Why are you laughing? Oh, you gotta not be a sissy about it. That's the worst thing about all these videos these guys do going through all these old places. They worry about safety. You don't worry about safety. You just go look at cool shit. <laughs> Bottom of a leg. Huh. Apparently, at some point, underneath what is now the dock, there's another pit. But, this appears to be another big hammer mill. If I could find a tag, I do not see a tag on this one. Let me, uh, Nope, definitely not seeing a tag on that one. Yep, there's definitely a pit under where the loading dock is now. That one's, I don't know if you can see that top cover. That one's uh, ground some corn in its day. Here it. This one looks build about the same as that one under the other side of the mill, so I'm assuming they're the same brand. <laughs> What's behind the door? Definitely a busted light bulb now. This is just a switch room. Hopefully this is showing up on video. There's definitely a pit under the loading dock. And just a quick shot outside. That pit is gonna be right there under that dock somewhere. And then this is the top of the that's where those six feed bins are. And then that first pit is obviously, I walked around in the back side of there, and this is the old dock. So, now we're gonna go over to the elevator. And we were just over there at the mill. And this is the elevator. And that is their burn up feed truck with a perfectly good stainless feed body that for some, I don't know why they didn't take that off and sell it. That used to be an F650. But this is the blower for the dryer. Two great big squirrel cage fans. There used to be a siding, a railroad siding right here. And that's the metering system for the dry. That obviously filled up there and then this is the metering system that metered it out as it was drying not really a good way to get in there to see it there's a switch room I got that. Most important room in the whole building right there.
Come on in, boss. This is your deal. Why are you getting? Next to all. This is it. Hmm? This is your pit. Looks like they got two. Uh, there's one there, there's one there. And I guess there's probably one in there too. And that is the old truck cradle. You'd drive the front axle of the truck up under and they'd actually pick, the, or wagon or whatever you were hauling, they'd actually pick the whole front end up to dump when you didn't have a hoist. Those are illegal now. The winch motor for it. That's a lot bigger than, I've never actually seen one of these. That's first. Huh, those are steel doors, that's kind of neat. Oh, that's a lot further down than I thought it'd be. You want to take the elevator? Uh, I don't know. I think I'll uh, let that one slide. There's no water down there, though. So... We got some augers here. And that's, okay, so they got two pits outside. That's the center, or that's the first one. I don't know how, s holy shit balls. Okay, is this, that's a little nasty, but it's, So there's one pit. There's the other. Yeah, I like how they put that in, just knock a hole in the wall. And then you got your corn sheller. Pratter Pulverizer Co. Chicago, Illinois. And a Triumph. Green elevator and feed mill equipment. Bartlett, Bartlett and Son Company, Cleveland, Ohio. Wonder if that's the same Triumphs that made the wagons back in the day that I think Deer ended up buying. And then I'm going to guess, yep. So your cobs came out there, and those got fed down into that blower and got blown up. And then your corn would have been fed into one of these legs. That floor's nasty, by the way. There's uh, the original elevator. Capacity 330 pounds, employees one. <laughs> no shit, Sherlock. Well, I guess nowhere to go but up. And floor number two. Pretty uneventful. Got some high, or got some either grain or dust hoppers and just a couple dust fans and the elevator shaft. Safety. Uh, 
And floor number three gets a little more interesting. A great big clipper seed cleaner. Feeds in through there and then you got all your cleaning screens and basically like to shoe on a combine. It's actually in really damn good shape. It'd be cool to get this thing out of here. You got your cleaning screen or some of your cleaning screens. Super 224 8D2A. And there's where it says clipper. Saginaw, Michigan. Something Ironworks Decatur, Illinois. A big blower. And I'm assuming is another dust. No, that never mind, that's top of a leg. Definitely a top of a leg. Steel buckets on a Yeah, that's a rubber belt. Some of them are old this older leather. And up top, we just got the tops all the legs. Why are you laughing? You gotta explain this shit. No, you just fucking walking. <laughs> hey, no guts, no glory. Diverter. I'm gonna guess. Now that's probably the top of the feed bin for the clipper. Is there anything up there besides, I'm assuming it's all just leg tops up there. Yeah, yeah it's all just leg tops. And then, the four original silos are all dome tops, which is kind of odd. And there you go. I don't do height, so I ain't walking out there. I do a lot, but I ain't walking out there. Tyler's well, Tyler can go fuck himself. I ain't walking out there. So, and back down we go.
it kind of sucks because the new bins really aren't in that bad of shape even the old bins aren't terrible but Probably that one with shit oozing out the door. <laughs> mm. Mm. Both of them? Yeah. Mm. Oh, oh, oh. Wonder how long that's been in there. Nothing interesting to note. And that's the front door, I guess. It'd, since they load the trucks in this way, this would be the back door of the pit. Well, there you have it. A little look inside of a 1950s bead mill and a... I believe that's about a... That's a mid, like, I believe that elevator was put up in the 30s. Um, I can't say that for sure. I'm sure there's somebody around here I can talk to that can tell me exactly, but just judging by the way the tower was built, I'm guessing thirties. Um, like I say, we did it right. We got permission to be there. We weren't, weren't trespassing. Um, although we were told by the people that gave us permission to be there that if we were asked we were potential buyers that was our that was our backstory um just like i say even though that stuff or those two structures actually the they don't necessarily they're not really concerned about getting the elevator tore down because structurally it's sound except for one leg that is busted in half and is leaning over the railroad tracks that's a little iffy but um the mill they that building it's been let go too far for too long and there's no saving that they want the mill tore down um but uh yeah um then part of the deal was and i think i did a good job of not saying names or getting any video of any names or anything like that so if there's any weird jump cuts in this it's because i found something that needed to be taken out and the only way to do it is just cut it out and it makes a weird little jump but i think i did a good enough job i won't have to do any of that but part of the deal was couldn't tell anybody where we were at and couldn't say any names um so I realize I have some local guys that watch my channel. So if you do recognize those two buildings, don't go running your mouth off as to where they are because the last thing that the city wants is for any swinging dick to go walking through there and either be vandalizing it or somebody do something stupid and get hurt or anything like that. So that was just, we appreciated the opportunity to be able to go through there, be able to take the video, get all that on camera, kind of record it for posterity i guess you'd say so that was the give and take as we were able to go through it but nobody can know where we were at so we did that out of respect um but that being said we uh obviously got done there and got back we were shooting the shit and naturally the conversation came around to how cool it'd be to save that because like i say they were still milling feed and taking grain there up until i think they only closed that like five years ago but everything in the mill still worked and the main leg and pit obviously not the pit that goes to the sheller and the sheller legs and everything although i guarantee you that the legs still work they probably need new belts and buckets because i guarantee you start running them they're going to dry dry crack and fall apart but at least the main pit, the main big leg in the tower of the elevator still worked up up until five years ago. The uh, crossover conveyor that runs along all the tops of the bins is actually, it's not brand new, but I'd say it's probably only 10 years old because they put that in when they added 
the far east bin, they added two rings onto it. The next one west, they added a ring to it. And then obviously the, uh, the other bins are original to the structure. But um, yeah, the, the two big bins have new, new bottom rings on them because they were raised and then that the crossover conveyor is only like 10 years old. So some of that equipment there ain't even that old. And like I say, they were still taking grain there. They were still taking at least corn there to, to grind for feed up until five years ago. And there was actually an air system that blew grain down under the road, back over to the mill and then back up. So, and like I say, the mill is junk, the buildings, screwed the foundations bad the roof is toast the, the mill there's no say i mean anything is savable but the elevator you take down that bad leg the leg fell on one of the uh, wet bins for the dryer so that would have to go because it's not i doubt it, it's one of those it's one of them dome top bins like i showed you that was on the east side but there's two shorter there's two of them that are probably only half the height on the west side that were wet bins for the dryer i doubt you could find one of them tops to fix it because like i say those bins are from the 30s and i've never seen another set like them but aside from that you'd have to throw some money at it but structurally that that elevator is sound there's really nothing wrong with it it was built like a tank. It's all steel. The concrete under it's good. I can say I took it out in the basement. The basement's tight enough that after sitting all these years, I mean, there's a little bit of sludge on the bottom because it was all rotten corn, but there wasn't any water standing in it. Basically, you'd have to go through, clean up, do a lot of cleaning, re-tin it because there's some tin falling off. So you'd have to re-wrap it in new tin and definitely rewire it you did definitely need some electrical because that's that was sketchy but you're basically if you could buy the damn structure dirt cheap because the city got it for next to nothing because like i say they took it because they went the mill went bankrupt and i think they actually foreclosed on them or something like that but either way the city got it for next to nothing and they just want they just want rid of it so you could buy the whole thing for next to nothing as long as you promise to tear the mill down because they want that gone because it's a dangerous structure. But all three of the blenders in the mill worked up until five years ago. The hammer mill in the basement that was flooded worked until five years ago when they shut it down. The scale worked all the legs worked. So basically, if you pulled all the equipment out of the mill, tore the mill building down, built a new building on the west side of the elevator to put all the mill equipment in, and then you had the elevator there that you... I mean, obviously this is all a pipe dream, but it's cool to have dreams. If I had... If it's one of them deals, I made a joke that if I had 100,000 subscribers, I'd make a GoFundMe and buy, try to raise money to buy that uh, mill and elevator and restore the elevator just because it's cool as hell. The Amer American grain elevators are kind of like dinosaurs. They're, they're pretty much dead. There's none of them old ones left. They didn't have the... After... After the 80s, when the small guys got went out and the big guys started taking over and trucks started getting bigger and they needed more capacity, those small elevators just couldn't keep up and they started folding one by one. And I think there's actually only one left that's built, that was built around the same time as that one that still takes grain and that's the one down here south of the state line. They still mill feed there but they don't take grain on a large scale basis. They just do grain bank. If you want feed ground, you haul your own corn in, they grind it for a, for a fee, mix it however you want it, and then you come get it. They sack it and you come get it and take it out. They don't actually store grain there or anything anymore. But uh, yeah, we were we probably spent better part of an hour, hour and a half talking about all the things that you could do there to 
make it operational again. And because you wouldn't really have to do a whole lot of work, I mean, that's a false statement. It would take a lot of work, but mechanically and structurally it's sound. It's basically just making everything right again. Like I say, new tin. I'm sure the foundation could probably use a little bit of work. Go through, you'd have to, have to restore the legs because I'm sure the belts and buckets are junk. You know, just probably do a lot of painting. Replace a lot of bearings. But I mean, even at that, there was only three or four legs in there. The fanning mill, the sheller, a couple dust fans. I mean, there really wasn't anything in that tower as far as equipment. It was just legs, a sheller, and some other shit. So there's really not even a whole lot of equipment there to fix. But it's if you had like $200,000 maybe, it probably might not even be that much. If you got enough people to volunteer their time that wanted to see it done, I mean, you could probably get it done for a group of people with a reasonable amount of money. But I don't think 12,000 subscribers is enough to get it done. So anyway, like I say, that's enough rambling. Um, just uh, like I say, if you do recognize the buildings, don't go running your mouth off. We don't need none of that. It was a good opportunity. We don't want to be getting in trouble and have to take the video down. So, I guess with that, that's it for this one. We'll catch you all on the next one.